Guys, guys, guys. What is up with you guys? All right, all right. So I go to check my video analytics this morning just because, you know, I, I'm like, you know, why not? Why not? I'm planning on reading a new one probably today. So, you know, why not? Why not? Why not go to my YouTube analytics? You know, why not? And I go there. And I, I, well, I see two things. I one see chapter one got over a hundred views, which makes me very surprised because it's, it's like a hundred people wouldn't sit around and listen to a guy reading in a library, but I guess YouTube's the biggest library. Um, and the second thing I noticed is that I'll actually, I'm pulling it up right now and it's that. Because, you know, when you go into YouTube analytics, it lets you look at a lot of things and only lets you, <laughs> lets you look at a lot of things, but only has data for, like, very little of those things. So. So when I go, so an, analytics-wise, apparently only 20% of you guys are subscribed. No. <laughs> uh, although that ironically is true when I look at it. Uh, don't be pressured. Um, no, only like 20% of my views are from the United States. And it's not that that concerns me. What really concerns me is that it says 20% is from the U.S. And then it says nothing about the other 80%. Where did the 80% go? I don't know. Clearly, YouTube Analytics doesn't either. And, yeah. Anyway, I think I just want to say thank you. It's been great. Uh, I read chapter 18 this morning. Uh, it was it was it was really good. All three parts. All three parts. Not that chapters aren't gonna have multiple parts for just a little bit, but you know this is chapter three now. So there's more Diane talking, and that means more echoey editing for me. So. Let's get right into reading, I guess. Or let's let me let me get right into reading. <clears throat> How deep can I go? Chapter three. Within a couple of weeks, I had finally hit my goal right on the dot. It made me so happy and relieved to finally see that number. Finally, it could stop and maintain. I knew I had to, anyways. I hadn't had a period in a while, and it was worrying me. I didn't know whether it was, it was a side effect of being underweight. But nevertheless, I had to chill out for a bit. Oh, come, oh, come on. on. You're happy with that? You know those, those girls can still call you fat. I'd weigh 85 pounds if I were you. Once again, the voice had a point. Lucille and her friends were still going at me, even telling me that I didn't deserve to eat. And if they, that if they saw me eating, they would make sure to pick on me. But wouldn't 85 pounds be too low of a number? There's no way I could get to that weight. Nonsense. Just cut your calories to about 900 and you'll be fine. But 900 calories isn't a lot. Skip meals. Problem solved. Robin would notice. She wouldn't be happy. Well, it's your life, not hers. She can't control you. 90 pounds is acceptable. I could do that. 85, on the other hand, is ridiculous. I'm not doing it. We'll see about that. Later that morning, I went to get my usual breakfast, but as I went to sit down, I had the sudden urge just not to eat. I stared at the bowl of fruit for minutes. My hands were shaking so badly, and my anxiety was rising. It was like I was scared of it. I wanted to eat, but I knew I had to, but I couldn't physically manage it. You are getting to 85 pounds, so no breakfast for you. Or lunch. You can have a snack of 200 calories and a supper for 700. You never know when your father will make some high-calorie food, so I want you to be safe making dinner at the highest allowance. Total at 900. It was as if I wasn't even in control anymore. Even if I wanted to eat, I couldn't make myself, and every time I tried, I could only think of my newly chosen goal weight. So despite wanting to eat and knowing I should have, I threw my breakfast away. I did grab a quick lunch, though, just in case I needed it whilst in school. I had a problem with the low blood sugars dropping, so I wasn't about to take the risk. Unfortunately, later came lunch, and I tried to eat, but I simply couldn't. 
It didn't help that Robin was right next to me, wondering what was going on. Robin watched as I tried to force myself to take a bite of my wrap, but couldn't actually do it. It was I noticed it was getting harder to eat lately, but it was seemed so sudden that I just couldn't seem to anymore, unless I just progressed this far without even noticing. Diane, Robin interrupted my thoughts. Are you okay? Fine, f fine. Why? I stammered. Uh, you're not eating. You're just tearing it into small pieces. I didn't even realize I had basically destroyed the wrap I had for lunch by tearing it into small pieces. I sighed and shoved it all back in the bag where it came in. I couldn't eat that now. I was going to have to toss it. What are you doing? Robin cried out in response. You can't just throw it away. You gotta eat something. I sighed. I, I can't. What do you mean you can't? I can't make myself do it. I don't know why. I glanced over at Robin, and she had such a weird look on her face. It made me feel uncomfortable. Diane, something is going on, she said with concern. I'm really worried. Like, really worried. First you lose a bunch of weight, and now you can't eat? You're gonna end up dead. I didn't have anything to say to her. I was tired from fighting with myself and didn't have any energy left since I hadn't eaten all day. Instead of answering her, I wrapped my arms around my grumbling stomach and put my head on the table. I felt like I was going to be sick. I didn't know what to do. Diane? I replied with a muffled groan. Are you okay? You really don't look good. Which I know is not from eating, but still. You're worrying me. I turned my head and looked up at her. She was really worried. It showed loud and clear on her face, but her worry only made me feel worse. Before I knew it, I was tearing up and started crying. I, I don't know what's wrong with me, I sobbed. Robin didn't look surprised like when I was crying and did her best to show that she was listening. I just wanted to be healthy and now I can't even make myself eat. And now it's not healthy. But I can't control it. Robin sighed. Maybe it has something to do with your weight? I think it's obvious you're scared of putting on weight. I know I am, but right now I just want to remain where I am at least. But I can't even do that. I don't know what to tell you. I would talk to someone, though. I don't think you realize how badly this is hurting you, Robin said quietly. I never thought I'd say this, but therapy would do you some good. I nodded slowly. Logically, she had a point, but the voice in my head didn't care. It was determined I got to a lower weight, and it wasn't something I seemed that I could fight. Talking to someone about my weight loss plan seemed like a bad idea. They would possibly intervene, and I didn't need that. Do you think you're going to make it through the day? Robin asked. I would imagine you haven't got much energy. I groaned. I wanted to go home, but biology and pre-calculus was important. I need to get good marks in those classes. I can't. I got biology and pre-calc. I need those classes, I muttered. Well, this is my opinion. But what's the point of showing up if you can't even function? I mean, look at the state you're in, Robin pointed out. I would call your dad and go home. Once again, she made a good point. I wasn't going to properly take in any information, and I really just wanted to go home. I was exhausted. Alright, I sighed. I'll call home. Just don't tell him about this, okay? I won't. As long as you promise to eat something when you get home. I don't care what. I nodded and pulled out my phone, and gave my dad a call. Luckily, he was on break and was able to come and get me. His workplace was a bit picky on when people could take off, so I was extremely lucky. Robin weighed with me by the office, and eventually Dad came to get me. Are you feeling okay? He asked as we drove home. I noticed you seem more tired than usual. I haven't been sleeping properly, I lied. Ah, maybe I should get you some menicillin tablets. No, don't worry, it's fine. I sighed. Well, if you say so. We got home and Dad dropped me off. He had to go back to work so he couldn't stick around. Alright, get some rest, Dad told me after kissing my forehead. Remember, try and eat something. You're getting a bit bony. I nodded. Dad left and I flopped into bed. Dad's comment reminded me of what Robin wanted me to do. Before I left, she made me promise to eat something. I didn't really want to get up and get something. But breaking promises was against what I stood for. So with a grunt, I pulled myself out of bed and headed to the kitchen. I looked through the cupboards and fridge, trying to find something low in calories and healthy. 
but nothing was catching my eye. Everything that was catching my eye was junk food. I really wanted it, but knew it was a bad idea. But yet, I found myself drawn to it. With the hopes of fulfilling my cravings, I grabbed a small handful of gummy worms. However, after eating them, I just craved them more. I found myself going back and forth between the kitchen and my room, each time with a small handful of sweets. After about the sixth time of doing this, I realized what I was doing. I was binging. Oh, no, 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 no. Not good. Pig! This is why you stay away from junk food. I freaked out and started sobbing. I messed up. I didn't know what to do. I had to get rid of it somehow. I knew exercise was my best bet, but I just didn't have the energy despite eating so much sugar-laden crap. For some reason, I went to the bathroom and checked my body to see the damage I had done. Look at you. You look so fat, especially after all that damn candy. My own reflection made my eyes sting. I hated my body. It wasn't slim or built the way I wanted. My hair was a complete mess, and my eyes looked tired. I could tell I was bloated from what I'd previously eaten, and it just made me look more deformed and wrong. Purge. Get rid of that shit you ate. I changed my view from the mirror to the toilet. Without even thinking about it, I went over to the toilet, knelt down, and shoved my fingers down my throat. I didn't care how much the stomach acid stung coming up. All I cared about was how much I hate myself how much I needed to change. Man, that was a, uh, that was a pretty intense chapter. Not much, uh, not much outside struggle, but definitely you got that internal struggle. Very eminent right here. Uh, I'm glad I can just, I'm glad I can just read this to people, you know? But, I cannot I can't wait for next time. Next time, it's probably going to be... It's going to be a bit of a... It's going to be a bit of a longer one since Chapter 4 is in two parts. They start be becoming multiple parts, so... Which I, which I really love for just reading, but... To be fair, casual reading and reading out loud... Ooh, those take two different speeds. Uh, anyway. Hope you like that. Hope you like that. Sorry, sorry, this took longer than last time, which last time it was just the day after, but this time it's a bit longer. Uh, I've been, if you really, if you really want to know, I have been working, I've been working on, um, a few projects for an online event called FEE3. Which is basically people from around the world, like that. This, that's already crazy. People from around the world contribute their own Fire Emblem ROM hacks, and any Fire Emblem game, Fire Emblem ROM hacks. They make trailers and stuff to show off at their own little E3 event, and I think that is awesome. So I submitted a couple projects that I've been working on. And one of them, I, I lost all my progress to, to, so I have to rebuild it. I'm really sad because the one I was really hoping to be, like, really good on. So Final Fantasy Tactics and the Game Boy Engine will have to wait. But yeah. But if you en if you enjoyed that, just yeah, maybe you can read it for yourself. Maybe maybe not. I don't know. But thank you, and I will see you guys next time. Oh, wait, no, before, before. I still have to give credit to Cyanimations. And not, and not, not forget to not credit them again. Them. Why, why do I use, why do I use neutral pronouns? Her, her. Ah, neutral pronouns are what we call a safe word. <laughs> they're, they're what we call safe words. Because we're not worried, so we don't worry about offending someone because we miss judge their gender and that's that's how anxious people play their day <laughs> uh, there was there was totally something else i don't know I, I took up most of my intro time explaining how most of my viewers are not from america well i guess i guess i got 80 80 percent of those viewers in canada probably do canada's a rad place 
you live in Canada, thumbs up to you. I'm also sorry of your history of being the hacky sack of Europe being tossed around until you just became your own thing. But still not offending. Still not offending. Because Canada is a rad place. Because if we didn't have Canada, then America would, it would probably be a part of America. And America would be too big and it's already got a pretty big ego. So I should end this video before I offend someone else in my country or somewhere else.